This is Robert Card. He is an active duty army reservist. Um, and he went on a mass shooting spree. In Maine, he used to bowl at this bowling alley and uh, eat at this local like restaurant bar thing. And basically, uh, a guy who was uh, like routinely reported to have like mental health issues wasn't heard. Um, and he decided to speak louder. I'm not, by the way, just to preface this, endorsing anything. I'm merely going to offer an explanation that I think might answer some questions that people aren't willing to ask. Um, this guy was very troubled. He has recently been hearing voices. He has recently been checked into facilities. And they released him. Presumably because they didn't think anything was wrong. Well, clearly, that wasn't accurate. Because now this is the deadliest mass shooting this year, and 18 people minimum are gone. Right? But also... Um, he was, like, apparently, uh, guilty of multiple sorts of offenses, and those have been sort of discussed on various news outlets. And trouble at home, trouble on the base he was recently working at, where they said he was acting, quote, erratically. Um, and basically, it seems like Somebody who, for the past over two decades, has been gradually learning more and more ways to be violent, is not that right in the head. Um, if you look into it, here is an article from uh, Boston Globe. If you look into it, you'll see this guy's a 40-year-old. And he enlisted in the army in the winter of 2002. That means he enlisted over two decades ago. And uh, when he was about 19. And this means that since he enlisted uh, while working toward a degree in engineering technology, his enlistment was for those sorts of benefits. Meaning he was not that well-to-do. Those with wealthy parents and generational wealth, they don't need to worry about becoming meat for the meat fodder factory um, if they, like, already have wealthy parents, if they already have means. So I would guess that this was not a man of means, that this was a man of poverty. And that... He, like so many other people, um, was lured in to the military uh, by recruiters who told him that it'd be a great way to make expenses. And he, he bought that shit, <laughs> you know? He enlisted in the army while working toward a degree in engineering technology at the University of Maine, according to a spokesperson for the branch in college. And if you look into it, his first follower on Twitter is literally a, uh, a terrorism expert at University of Maine. So go figure. That Twitter account was made last year as well, which means that he's been keeping, like, keeping up with professors from University of Maine. Interesting tidbit, side information. And his Twitter account is, of course, suspended because he liked a bunch of conservative shit, including Elon Musk. And uh, the new conservative Twitter management can't have people seeing too much of that shit. Seeing, like, potentially the consequences of some of their beliefs in action. But either way, um, basically, he uh, 
never graduated, instead committing himself to the armed forces, where he worked his way up to the rank of Sergeant First Class and earned the Army Achievement Medal and the Humanitarian Service Medal. He currently holds the rank of First Sergeant and has the military specialty of Petroleum Supply Specialist. So, my guess, at least partly, is he became disenfranchised, realizing what kind of racket he was involved in. Because, I mean, you know, when you realize that it's war for oil, it's, it's a lot harder to sort of maintain a clean conscience about it. And recently, he was assigned to the 3rd Battalion, 304th Infantry Regiment in Sacco, Maine. While Card was training with this unit at Camp Smith, a military installation uh, operated by the New York Army National Guard, military leaders said they observed Card acting erratically, according to a public affairs officer. Out of concern for his safety, the unit called New York State Police, who transported Card to the Keller Army Community Hospital at the U.S. Military Academy in West Point, New York, for medical evaluation. <laughs> so, part of this acting erratically was that he was hearing voices. For two weeks, he reported hearing voices and threatened to shoot up the military base. No information was provided about Card's treatment or diagnosis, which means... I'm guessing, a psychological break of some sort. It wouldn't surprise me if the constant stress of working for that environment caused some issues. I mean, that is the more surface-level analysis and not the potential fact that this might be something orchestrated. I would never say that this might be something orchestrated. That would never occur to me. Uh, not like the government ever, you know, sets things up or, you know, nudges people in the right direction so that they can get their, their policy positions uh, reified by certain actions. No, uh, I would never suggest such a thing. This is not a psyop, it's nothing. But what it could be is that he got very stressed by consistently training, by consistently being involved in military action, and for what? He never saw combat. <laughs> he never got to see combat. All he got up to was petroleum supply specialist. But that did uh, mean that he uh, holds an active duty military identification card that this article says grants him access to military facilities in Maine. It's unclear what he was doing recently for work, according to this article. According to state records, Card was licensed as an electrician's helper for two years in 04 and 06, but let that license lapse. Records indicate that his father, Robert B. Card Sr., holds a master electrician's license. But basically, uh, a neighbor of Card's parents said that the suspect's mental health issues were pretty well known in the area. Officials declined to answer questions during a press conference Thursday about how and when Card was able to access a gun. And we can't see a lot of his mental health issues because his Twitter was suspended, his Facebook was suspended, everybody's clearing house. We can't accept any responsibility for the kinds of psychological influences our platforms might have had on this guy. No. Um, and particularly, lately, his feed was replete on Twitter, and you can see scrapes of it still. Uh, his feed was replete uh, on Twitter with anti-woke shit. Anti-woke shit. Co uh, conservative shit. Uh, stuff from Tucker Carlson, Ben Shapiro, Donald Trump Jr., and Elon Musk, the Babylon Bee, and a bunch of other conservative chuckle fucks. And basically, uh, if you, 
hold these conservatives to the same standard that they held, uh, like, liberal leftists to uh, when that recent shooting happened at that uh, private school, then we have to assume that the reason this person was like this was because of the radical ideology pushed by people like Tucker Carlson and Ben Shapiro and etc., etc. That there is some dire threat, that your enemies are violent, that they're going to destroy you, that they're going to destroy this country. I mean, being fed a steady drip feed of that stuff would absolutely reify whatever the voices in somebody's head were saying. Um, you know, and I could leave it at that. I could talk about the conservative hypocrisy there. The fact that, you know, they didn't look into the, uh, into the shooters, like, you know, fucking history at the school. And the fact that that shooter went to that school at the same time as a bunch of sex abuse scandals were being uncovered, like, later, like, same time that this person went to this school, um, later on would be revealed as the same time that a bunch of sex abuse scandals were happening, but don't think too hard about that. <laughs> you know, don't think too hard about the fact that maybe people are mentally fucked up for a reason, right? I could just say that this is conservative hypocrisy and leave it at that because they won't take credit for their influence on this man. Any, like, any level to which they would demand that leftists and liberals take credit whenever somebody is even remotely like a leftist or a liberal. Um, and they certainly won't recognize that the vast majority of mass shooters are not LGBT and that the vast majority of them are straight, white, etc. Um, you know, they're not going to do that. But what, what I'm going to focus on here, because... I thought I'd throw that in there since a lot of his posts were anti-trans and anti-woke and anti-left and, and, and. I thought I would just throw that in there, but I would also then say that I don't think it's that simple. I don't think that this person was radicalized by Ben Shapiro or Tucker Carlson or any of these other notable right-wing figures. I think he was first radicalized by the U.S. fucking government in a routine and extremely conservatively acceptable practice of grooming that is recruitment. For those of you who've been following my little vlog series for a long time, first off, I'm going to start posting content again, and I apologize for the hiatus. Um, some shit got in the way. Those of you who watch my weekly streams know what that shit is. But basically, um, I started off a lot of, uh, the, the content here by talking about how, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance is grooming children into the cult of statism. And I also had some stuff about how military recruitment was that. And I also have talked extensively about the fact that if children are not mentally stable enough to drink, um, if children are not mentally stable enough for a variety of other things that they have to wait till they're fucking 21 for, then they're not also mentally stable enough to go kill people for the U.S. government. And... They, are, they also aren't mentally stable enough that you can justify going into their schools as an adult and saying, come kill people for us and we'll give you easy money. Or, come help us kill people and we'll give you easy money. It, if kids aren't old enough for all of this other stuff, if, for instance, kids aren't old enough to be on hormone blockers, they're not old enough to be recruited by U.S. Army esports on social media, or these fucking thoughts online who are literally just 
actual components of psychological operations centers posting selfies and thirst traps and shit to try and get people to join the army. That's a psyop. Um, it's a literal psyop. The chick is literally in psyops. And you can look it up. Basically, kids are bombarded on all sides by this. And when it's not all this, like, you know, overt recruitment techniques, it's the media. It's literal military porn and propaganda shows um, designed to reinforce patriotism and get people wowed about the military without having any actual, you know, criticism of it. Like, yeah, sure, you can access our, uh, our military hardware. We'll give you, like, helicopters and shit, and we'll help you make it realistic as long as you don't talk shit about the military-industrial complex or the intelligence-industrial complex or our torture programs or our slaughter and, like, brutal hum humiliation of countless uh, subjected nations. Uh, that are under the neoliberal thumb of Western capitalism, partly due to our military and intelligence operations. Don't talk any shit, and we'll let you use our gear. We'll put specialists in your movie, uh, like production crew, your television production crew. And those specialists will ensure that you're not sending a message we don't like. Building propaganda for the next generation. Every time you see in a movie that they cooperated with the U.S. government, with the military, with a branch of it, or some shit like that, you should realize that these people are producing overt propaganda. It happened with Zero Dark Thirty. It happened with, like, the Transformers movies. It happened so many fucking times. It didn't happen with Captain America the Winter Soldier because they were criticizing the MIC. So the MIC told them to go fuck themselves, and they said, sure, we'll just make the movie on our own. We'll take our toys and make our movie critical of imperialism on our own. And so when the military isn't producing that propaganda, they're also producing video game propaganda, or music propaganda, or just so many different types of propaganda. When I was in school, there were posters, there were pamphlets, there were assemblies, there were all of this shit, and that wasn't too long before he was doing his shit, you know, or after. It's not like this is some super new thing. They've been doing the same shit for fucking ever. Trying to lure people in. And he also happened to start his military career right around 9-11. A big rally around the flag event. So he was probably at least partly influenced by the fact that just a state over in New York... He was watching people die from terrorism. So he thought he'd go in and fight him some terrorists, do the good guy thing, get some medals on his chest, and at the same time pay for college. He thought it'd be a great moral thing to do. And everything since has probably been a disenfranchising kick in the nuts. Everything since. And to his credit, people like Tucker Carlson do talk about the military and intelligence industrial complexes. And seeing some of that stuff, I mean, not all of it, because Tucker has a propensity to protect right-wingers. Um, so there's a huge chunk of this problem that he doesn't talk about um, because he's got to pander to his Republican base. So it always has to be more about immigrants or Black Lives Matter or some shit than anybody on his side, right? Um, to his credit, though, T 
Tucker Carlson will talk about this sort of thing. And by the effect of sort of wagging the dog, when a bunch of conservatives saw that they could, you know, protest certain smidgeny aspects of the war machine and get more broad-based support, they were like, we'll do that. So a bunch of these people have some tendencies against the military-industrial complex that might make somebody starting to experience the symptoms of dissociation, voices in their heads, schizoid tendencies, that kind of person, a little bit more propensitized to say, I want to shoot up my military base because I've been betrayed by the system that taught me to be violent. And maybe somebody this kind of unhinged might realize that the military-industrial complex is a little bit too complex to make the target. And maybe this kind of person might realize that the people in his community um, piss him off on a more regular and daily basis. I'm not endorsing this. I'm not trying to say I'm on his side. I'm just saying maybe the system taught him to be violent and routinely told him to be violent and now he's being violent. And that maybe the foundational root of these problems is the societies that teach people to be violent unnecessarily. The ones that would send U.S. troops to fight in some foreign conflict in Ukraine or Israel or any number of other foreign theaters whose governments aren't responsible for targeting the U.S., whose governments aren't responsible for any attacks on our soil, that maybe somebody like this would be too close to the corruption machine to look away from it. And maybe that would get somebody like this to start breaking a little. I don't know that that's the case, but I do know that somebody who was partly coerced into this system by being young as fuck and then propagandized into it, by being poor as fuck and then, like, twisted into the position by saying we'll help you pay for college, that this sort of person might have a little bit stronger reason to break after over two decades of increasing and more and more obvious bullshit. Feeling more and more and more betrayed and no escape from it at all. That maybe this kind of person even after all of these signs, all of these warning signs, still being ignored effectively and then released, maybe that kind of person is the kind of person who is all too common among the hired killers of the U.S. Empire. And maybe the problem is that the system is totally fine with violence until it hits home. And then they've got to explain why one of their assets went rogue. Just putting some thoughts out there. You know... Because I don't think any shallow, fucking, nuance-free bullshit sort of fake explanation is going to solve jack fucking shit. And I'm tired of seeing the bloodshed. Especially since, so often, it can be traced back to reasons why we need to smash the fucking state.